Welcome back, Polygoners, to part number three, where we're finally going to get to look at the dreaded Broodlords. Up until now, you've scouted your opponent's base, reacted to what you've seen and going on there. Then in the mid-game, we've been trading very efficiently, or at least as efficiently as possible, in an effort to prevent the death ball and to begin to take map control. This will also, of course, limit the number of stalkers, which of course get destroyed by Hydra, Speedlings, and then Ultralisks. Ultralisks also do a good job cleaning Colossi off of the field. And once we begin producing the Broodlord and Fester, that becomes the bulk of our offensive army. The army that we were using to take map control, we use it to continue to hold map control while pushing with the gas-centric army. So we've basically got two separate armies performing separate functions. The mobile, more mineral-based Hydraling Ultra army does a more defensive thing. And you'll be seeing that in this game. I don't go too much into it because the action is uh, pretty, pretty on target and I wanted to keep the discussion on positioning the Broodlords, but I do want you to recognize in the game we're about to watch exactly how Jim Rising is using his more mobile mineral-based army for defensive postures. Notice that the Queens and the uh, Ultralisks over here kind of playing a defensive role. Also a defensive Ultralisk. Doesn't have one here, but he does have one here. Two here, rather. So we've got like the defensive Ultralisk thing going on, which is new to me. And here is the defining characteristic of Broodlord, the Spinecrawler Wall. Interestingly, he chooses to build this at his Mulligan base, the base we already know has a target painted on its back. And he can, of course, unburrow those and move them forward on a creep as needed. But for now, it's a defensive thing. So really awesome way that you see Jim Rising uses um, his offense for defense and like switching what roles they play back and forth. And we got plus two Carapace starting now whole bunch of lings going to be coming here in just a moment and what's interesting about this ultra corruptor ling force is that it can be really aggressive knocking down debris and rocks and things like that and open up new ways of attacking the protoss and while he's got the map control in this form the defense goes up the bases get taken and as you see the lings trying to get in that mineral line worth the effort it does get most of his technological part of his army away from there and when the spines completed at that fifth base, had a bunch of spines being created over here. We got the Zealot Harass shutting that down, but hey, that still could have been a solid move. And both the spine wall, which he's gonna need for his Broodlords, and the Zealot defense, kind of a dual purpose there, really loving it. And now we're beginning to add in small numbers of investors. All the um, Broodlord, or all the Corruptors, did get morphed into Broodlords, especially here at kind of like the third base. That way, the Protoss kind of has to go all the way through these bases, opening himself up here or down here. This is really the safest point. And as the Ultralisks begin to die, the goal is just replace them with Broodlords. Hydra Ling reinforcements from here on are going to be for defense. Infester, Broodlord, Corruptor will be offense. And of course the Corruptor's goal is to kill the Tempest. And if they want to get frisky and try running away, Neural Parasite can just hold them right on in place. We're going to be seeing that here in just a moment. But it's a really phenomenal tactic that I want you to see as it's happening. Good grabs on those Archons. Pulls them into the Broodlords, killing off what he can. And here's the big fight. You can see how it uh, progresses. We'll slow it right on down. Corruptor's moving it forward in the front to uh, kind of just poke at this mothership or any uh, units that it can attack in the air. Broodlord's trying to get the perfect position right over here in this, in this little gap here, this area right here being preferred so that uh, stalkers have a harder time getting underneath of them.
Corruptors moving forward. Great Neural Parasites going down. And as you can see, the Brew Board's definitely cleaning up house here. Especially on the ground. Mothership going to be targeted at this stage. That does fall. The rest of the ground units are going to be uh, open season here. And Neural Parasite being used to kill some of the Tempests with their own Tempests. Holding them in place when possible. And this is the ideal way to utilize this kind of composition. It is a base breaking composition. Not the best out on the field by any means. But when it comes to breaking a base, this is the composition you need. That's why Ultra Ling Hydralisk is so important because that's the uh, out on the open field composition. Once you've used that to take over the open field, you use this to break it. Thank you so much for joining us today, guys. I hope this helped you understand Zerg versus Protoss a little bit better, or even Protoss versus Zerg, if you happen to be from the higher side of the spectrum. If you enjoy this content, please let me know in the comments below what topics you'd like to see us cover next. I'm looking for new topic ideas for videos, so let us know there what you would like to see more of. Also, if you had any questions about this video or maybe something you'd like some more elaboration on that maybe I skipped over, let me know. I try to consolidate these videos as much as possible. Um, unpacking only a specific idea, there's definitely a ton in this video that we could like recover just by recasting the game, but I think we'll use that in another game. Anyways, guys, I do thank you so much for watching. I am Shaft with Polygon Gaming. If this is your first time to the channel, please make sure you smash that subscribe button. Hit, uh, like, uh, hit like on this video if you liked it as well. And if you're feeling particularly generous, visit us on Patreon. It helps so much. See you next time. Shadowlay, my dudes. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.